Hey bag makers, today I'm going to be talking about the ruler rack, new rainbow zippers in the shop, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. I'll be showing various color wheels that I picked up as well as whimsy kits by Heidi Boyd. I have a tutorial on how to attach binding to, to the inside of your bag and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. All right, uh, I see Carol's watching from Maryland. Uh, Cindy from Oklahoma. Uh, Jessica from Georgia. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Just a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, projects, fabrics, or notions that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So I know a few weeks ago I shared with you um, some photo examples of ruler storage for while using pegboard. Um, Denise emailed me a couple of weeks ago showing me what she used to store her acrylic rulers and I thought it was pretty cool so um, even though I recently talked about it I thought I would share with you this um, extra thing that I picked up um, let me show you in the front camera first um, it comes in two different sizes it's called uh, the ruler rack by Rita's racks um, this is the 36 inch size and it also comes in 18 inches so um, half the length I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera so I can share with you what all came in the packaging. So first off, I'll slide this over so you can see the ends. Um, this is what came in the packaging and this is just um, an example of how your acrylic rulers or other notions, as you can see there's an embroidery hoop, some scissors over here, so other things can be stored here as well. The 36 inch long ruler rack came with these pegs. Um, and there's six pegs that came in the package and they just, once this is on the wall, they just slide in there and it can hold several acrylic rulers. Um, the packaging says that this particular one, the 36 inch long one, can hold up to 42 single acrylic rulers, so that's quite a lot. And it also came with um, some supplies for attaching it to the wall. I thought I would try first before using screws and nails to attach mine to the wall to see if um, heavy duty command strips might work just in case I'd ever like to move this and I think initially I was planning on attaching this this table that I'm at right now has an overhang I thought of attaching it underneath the overhang sort of to keep it out of the way because I don't necessarily have 36 inches of continuous I have like one spot in the room where I have 36 inches of continuous space so I thought to try that first there are a few things that you need to provide yourself for installing this if you are using um, the screws and nails to attach it. Um, you'll need a level, obviously, a screwdriver, a wrench, a pencil, hammer, and nails, and then everything else is included in the package, just so you know not everything is necessarily in there. Directions for hanging it on the wall are included, and I thought this was pretty nifty, and um, I don't have a, a huge amount of wall space because I have bookcases behind me. Dan, you could switch back to the front camera. I don't have a huge amount of wall space for a large pegboard, like the example I gave a few weeks back, but I thought this ruler rack might be interesting and perhaps even the 18 inch size would be really useful because I, I was thinking before the show, perhaps you could stack them, one with a space underneath and then the other to maximize your space. I suppose it would depend on what kind of area you have in your sewing room or sewing space, but um, I wanted to talk about this option because I thought it was really cool and thanks to Denise for recommending it. And again, it was uh, the ruler rack. I linked to the 36 inch size in the description, but I made a note that the 18 inch size was also available. So if that's the one you're after, um, you can do a search for that one on Amazon or wherever you're purchasing it for uh, the smaller size if you're interested in. So let me push this out of the way. And then I, I wanted to share, we got some new zippers in stock. We restocked some of the zippers in the shop and um, a new color was included with the restock. So Danny, if you wouldn't mind switching back to the overhead 
Um, it's available in both um, number three zippers and number five zippers by the yard. And we also sell uh, pulls to go along with these, like these um, sewing machine pulls that I was using earlier today. Let me pull it out of the plastic so they're not so shiny. I was working on a new pattern today and I thought these sewing machine poles would be really cool for that. So I'm using these rainbow poles for the bag that I'm working on. Um, yeah, that's probably a little bit easier to see. Anyway, this is the, the new color style of zipper. The back of the zipper is uh, white, uh, just so you're aware. And we do also have the, the back in the photo product listing, just so you can uh, be aware of that. And again, uh, number five zippers and uh, number three. So really bright and happy fun zippers that we've added. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite color? So when I was a kid, my favorite color was always green. As an adult, I sort of admitted that I liked pink because when I was a kid, I would never have said that I liked pink, but I do enjoy pink, uh, turquoise. I really love turquoise, uh, kind of like the, the colors behind me, turquoise green. Uh, those are really good colors in my eyes. Um, I do like red, like what I'm wearing today, but uh, I don't normally choose red fabrics uh, for bags or quilts. I'm not sure why, it's just not the, the first color I reach for. Probably because if I'm going for pink, I don't necessarily grab red unless I'm working on a rainbow quilt. Um, so lots of new fabrics that I've added to my stash. Um, it's a huge pile, so I'm gonna have Danny switch back over to the overhead camera. Some fun Halloween fabrics. Um, so this first one is uh, a kit with a panel. So the panel includes a countdown calendar to Halloween. So it's basically kind of like an advent calendar, except for Halloween and the little windows um, have pockets to hold treats. Like there's, there's little pieces of candy in some of the, the pockets over here. Um, it also includes the fabric to make this bunting, the Happy Halloween bunting, four large plush characters, uh, six medium plush characters and then smaller elements. So these are some examples of uh, the plush characters, which this project pack makes a lot of projects. So uh, before the show, I sent Danny some pictures just so you could see uh, better photographs of the projects that are included. He's gonna put those on the screen for you right now. Um, I think, yeah, there we go. Uh, so there's the countdown calendar. Um, and that's what the actual panel looks like so as you can see on the right the left side all the elements that are included and then not in the panel but a separate panel is fabric for trick-or-treat bags so let me um, unfold this panel that I got and Danny's going to switch back to the overhead camera so these are panels for trick-or-treat bags so there's no not that uh, there's no instructions for making these but they're basically rectangles with handles and linings so lots of fun designs um, I think they're really great. Um, and then there's also a coordinating uh, yardage, which would be great for the linings of the bag. So it, it includes four different designs in this, this particular panel. So you can use these for the linings of the trick-or-treat bags, or you can use them for other projects, pouches, or what have you. And these are designed by Sarah Watts. Uh, Sarah loves Halloween, so I'm really glad she knocked it out of the park with this particular line of fabric and um, lots of fun. And um, even if you're not using this, these panels for trigger treat bags, I could see them um, featured in a, a large scale bag and um, it would be really fun. So I'm excited to use these. Um, I have a lot more fabrics in my stash. I have another Halloween line of fabric that I wanted to share. I actually bought these for my mom. These are Halloween dogs. And as you can see, there's an Australian Shepherd right there. So that's why I got this one for my mom. Let me open it up so you can see a little bit more detail in the fabric. So all the dogs are wearing their Halloween costumes. So cute. Um, there's a few prints in the line, but I only just purchased these two. And this is panel prints. I like panels because I always visualize myself perhaps using them for pouches. So these are just some of the designs in that other fabric, except uh, larger, and they're really cute. Okay, so I have another dog print. Um, this one's designed by Dean Russo, and I just got, I think I only got a half yard. Oh, that looks like a small piece. Um, I guess I thought I was getting more than this. Uh, I think it's just the panel, the length of the panel, but lots of dogs in bright fun colors and I, I don't have um, an idea for what I'll use this for but I just thought the fabric was really adorable and there's other prints and some of the panels are 
our larger um, images of the same designs. I did get this um, rotary cutter holder holder from It's So Emma, and it's uh, kind of a solid case, zipper case. Um, space for your rotary cutter and maybe extra blades, whatever you're putting in the other pocket. Um, I'm always scared when I'm taking my rotary cutter somewhere that it'll accidentally unlock and I'll cut myself or someone else will cut themselves. And so I thought this case was a good idea and I'll just keep it safe at my desk. And then I have a few other fabrics that I picked up as well. So I love this print with the butterflies. I thought the colors were nice and bright and um, from a different fabric line, but I also bought these both from Hawthorne Threads. Um, I like the navy background, something a little bit different, and the soft pop of pink. I just really like that in the flowers. Um, links to both of these are in the description as well as the other ones. And then last fabric that I picked up is from Timeless Treasures, and I bought a few yards of this one. Um, it's uh, unicorns and clouds and uh, kind of reminds me of smudge. So I bought a few yards because I'm not sure what I'll make with it, but I'm sure I'll make with I'll make something fun. So. Um, I do have lots more fabric that I purchased recently. I'll be saving those for future shows just so that I have enough to go around. Um, I have a que another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Have you ever nicked yourself with your rotary cutter while you were cutting out fabric or maybe it was just sitting in whatever container you keep it on your desk and you were trying to reach for something else and you, you nicked yourself on the blade. So I've nicked myself a few times. Usually when I do, I don't immediately realize that I've cut myself just because the blade is so sharp and it just doesn't even feel like you've been cut and then all of a sudden you see blood all over your hands. So it's happened to me a few times, um, kind of like a nasty paper cut times 10, but um, not fun, but hopefully now that I have that uh, little case that I shared with you to keep the rotary cutter in, I'll be able to keep a little bit more uh, safe in the sewing room. Um, so I, for dinner tonight, I wanted to share with you, um, I think I told you recently, maybe a few weeks ago, that I bought this book called The Elements of Pizza. I did try making pizza a couple months ago off a recipe I found on YouTube from Steve's Artisan Breads. It was okay, but the dough I found a little ten, um, dense, and so I picked up this book. I bought all the supplies. I bought some double zero uh, pizza flour made by a company out of Italy called Caputo's. So I bought the flour and all the supplies and I kind of sat on it for a little bit because I was nervous that I'd try again and it wouldn't be successful. But Danny, you can post my picture on the screen right now. I made the pizza for dinner tonight. I made the dough yesterday. It came out great. The dough was nice and crisp and light and airy. And uh, I made two pizzas. I have another dough ball. For lunch tomorrow. William doesn't like a lot of cheese on his pizza so this was the pizza for the adults and then I made a second one for the kids and the pizza takes um, I think it was six or seven minutes actual baking time so it was really fast. There's lots of different options in the book for different sauces and different toppings. I like cheese but I guess I'd like to experiment with at least some different vegetables but again it's called the elements of pizza and the pizza was delicious. Danny said uh, he was joking. He said, you know, it's just about just as good as a, a tombstone pizza, you know, the freezer pizzas. But um, then he admitted it was much better than tombstone. So I didn't say it that way. It was different. <laughs> um, what else did I do today? Today I also watched a documentary. I rented a documentary video on Amazon called Iris, and it was about um, Iris Ap Apfel. She's in her 90s, and um, let me read off of my notes. Um, there's the cover of the documentary movie. Um, she was in the textile business. She was a design restorer for the White House. Um, I think it said in the description she did design work in the White House for maybe nine presidents. Um, she's a professor of textiles and apparel at a university in Texas and she's known for her clothing and accessories. So she really layers on the accessories. I really enjoyed the documentary because it's really fun. When I mentioned she's a professor of textiles and apparels, I mean, now in her 90s, not you know, when she was younger, she's currently doing all these different things. Um, her clothing and accessories have been featured in museums and uh, she's just a really brilliant and funny lady. I wish in the documentary that I watched though that they shared a little bit more of her past history, especially working in the White House all those years. Um, it was mostly uh, 
current footage from, um, you know, in her 90s, so modern era, but uh, I really enjoyed it. She's witty. Um, her husband was in the, the film, and uh, it was just a, a fun afternoon enjoying that documentary. So I'm trying to find, my friend Sarah sent me some suggestions for um, shows and movies that I can watch that were either design or sewing related, and so um, I'll let you know which other ones I'm watching uh, on future shows of Social Sunday. So let's see, uh, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, when he's not on the show, we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We're so glad that you're here. Um, thank you for your patience these last few days regarding the website. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, um, the, the new website is, we're still working at it. Uh, not up to our standards and we'll let you know as soon as it's ready to go and we learned a few things in this process and uh, hopefully the next attempt will be uh, a lot quicker and a lot smoother. Um, what else do I have? So I thought lately I've been wanting to share some color wheels. I noticed looking online that there's a bunch of different options for color, color wheels. So I purchased three. I thought I'd talk about all three and share with you which one that I liked the best out of the three. So um, we'll start with this first one. This is uh, the Creative Color Wheel um, by the Color Wheel Company and it's two-sided and it's uh, movable. So um, on one side is shades and tones and then the other side is tints. So like lighter shades of, for example, yellow or blue-green. Um, so both sides. I like that it swivels and if you can see the center of the, maybe if I can hold it up uh, so you can see it a little bit closer, um, the center points to either complementary colors or split complementary colors. So complementary from yellow would be violet and then the split complementary would be blue violet and red violet. So it gives you the different options and you can swivel based on what colors you'd like to see matches for. And the same thing on the other side, this one's just tints instead, so the, the lighter shades of um, the pure color. The second one that I picked up is the Foolproof Color Wheel Set. And this one contains 10 different discs for matching your colors up. And on the left side, it tells you which disc um, goes with which uh, format for coloring. So. When I pulled these out, I noticed that they weren't labeled or numbered, so I went ahead with a pencil, uh, a white pencil, and I numbered them just in case I get them mixed up so that I know which is which. And basically, there's a, a little wood dowel in the middle, a metal dowel in the middle, and you basically just slide whichever disc that you want, and it tells you, for example, disc one is the direct complement, so um, yellow and purple would be complement, complementary red and green and so on. And you can just switch out the discs depending on um, what you're looking for as far as color matching. Okay, so again, 10 discs in this packaging. And then the third set that I got was from c and Publishing. And this third set, I'm running out of space over here. Um, this third set came with, in the plastic packaging, it came with sort of an insert explaining how to get different results and what to do as far as uh, finding different matches for colors. And then let me flip to, all right, uh, this front side, let me try to hold it up so you can see more clearly. So I'll, I guess I'll point out for orange. So it tells you complementary colors um, and other matches depending on what you're looking at. So orange is number 21, number nine would be the match. There's also, oh, sorry, I don't remember all the different names for all the different matches. Um, analogous colors, which would be next to each other, um, 21 and 9, I think I mentioned that one already, 21, 13, and 5. So 21, 13, and 5. So this one's not quite as easy to use as the one that swiveled back and forth, but I get the basic idea and everything's printed over here. And the back side is for the different shades of colors and the different tints, like the tints that I shared with you on this one that swivels. So basically they just put everything on one side over here. So out of all these, I really liked the, the sort of the method behind this one. I liked the swiveling. 
I didn't like the amount of colors as much as I liked on this particular one, the one from CNT Publishing, the Color Wheel Companion. Um, I, I guess I wish I could kind of marry these two together, but it is what it is. This is this is what it is as purchased. And I thought it would be fun, since I liked this one the best, um, the Color Wheel uh, Companion, I went down to my stash and I chose a color on the wheel. So I chose um, Aqua Blue. And I went with, I wanted to go with three colors. So I matched up Golden Yellow, according to the, the instructions over here, and Fuchsia. So I went down into my stash and I picked um, an Aqua Blue color, uh, a Fuchsia, and a Golden Yellow. This one was a print. And if you're making a quilt, obviously you could fill in colors based on the tints and tones on the back. So in the example of what I chose, the golden yellow, I could just pick different shades of the golden yellow. Same thing with the fuchsia and the aqua blue. And that would be a really cool quilt with lots of dynamic to it. And the colors would stand out based on choosing a good variety of lights, mediums, and darks. So again, these are three different color wheels. I linked to all three in the description in case you're interested in checking out more, but I find that th this is really helpful. Sometimes I don't know where to start um, choosing colors for a quilt. Sometimes I try to look for inspiration online, Instagram projects people have made before and see what kind of colors they're matching up. Um, when I see, if I'm flipping through Instagram, when I see a project, either a quilt or a bag, where I really like the fabric combinations that they've chosen, I save it so that I can reference it another time when I'm looking to start a project. I'm not necessarily looking to make the same exact project that they are, but I'm just looking for the color inspiration. So that's usually what I'm saving for, at least for pictures on Instagram. And one more thing that I wanted to share with you, I got in the mail this week, I purchased this um, wool kit from Heidi Boyd, and this is from her Whimsy Kit fab, uh, line of crafts. These are all made out of wool and meant to be hand sewn. This particular kit that I purchased comes with the three different birds and basically everything is included in, in the kit. So templates, the felt to make the three birds, uh, DMC floss, um, glass beads for the eyes, um, cotton pearl, the gray, this is for the hanging, um, stuffing, all the stuffings inside too, and then the embroidery needles and the straight pins, all you need is scissors. So the three birds are included. She has other kits for other animals and uh, embroidery. I really like her embroidery hoop uh, designs with, uh, she has some kits with colored fabric and the flosses are all included. So um, lots of extra things I've added to my stash. So I'll be busy uh, coming up. Um, all right, so our tutorial for tonight is uh, from a video that we filmed recently that we haven't released yet. It's for adding binding to your bag. So I don't have a lot of bags that are finished with binding, but I do have a few and I realized that uh, I didn't recall ever putting out uh, a tutorial on Social Sunday for attaching binding. So uh, we thought tonight would be a good idea for that. Um, for finishing a bag with binding, just about any bag could be or pouch could be finished with binding, even if the instructions don't call for it. You'll just want to first sew all the portions of your bag wrong sides together. So for example, if you have the front and the back of the bag, you'll sew your exterior and your lining wrong sides together. Basically assembling pieces that you'll sew exterior fabric to exterior fabric right sides together, which will end you up with uh, raw edges in your lining. So those raw edges will be enclosed with binding and that's how the bag is finished. So this is a great method not only for giving structure to your bag, but some projects are really small and hard to turn right side out and binding can help with that because you don't need to turn a bag or pouch through a small opening in the lining. You can just finish it with binding. So um, here's our video on how to make an attached binding to your bag. Enjoy. Okay, now go ahead and take your binding fabric and we're going to be cutting two and a half inch wide strips on a 45 degree angle. So I've got my piece of fabric here that I've already cut my strips out of just so that you can see an example of the 45 degree angle. So here's my selvage. I used my quilting ruler um, and it does have a 45 degree angle marking on there. So I just aligned my ruler at that 45 degree marking. Let me push this up. So here's that 45 degree marking and I just aligned the ruler and then I marked 
two and a half inch wide strips. So there's a few different ways that you can cut your um, binding fabric. I do have a free video on my YouTube channel showing two different methods on how to cut binding strips, but you will need to cut enough binding strips to sew together strips for the length needed for your pouch. So for size small, you'll need strips sewn together to create one long strip that's three and a half, three, 31 and a half inches long. Size medium will need 46 and a half inches long and size large will need 60 and a half inches long. So you'll need to keep adding strips until you get the length that you need. So I'm working with size small, so I'm going to go ahead and position my strips right sides together. And I'm actually gonna draw a diagonal line. The, the diagonal line is going to go from this corner of the fabric down to the corner underneath that top strip. Okay, so I'm gonna take this strip over to the sewing machine and we're gonna be sewing it directly on top of the line and make sure your stitch length is your regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and trim that seam to within a quarter of an inch of the stitching line. And then we're gonna press that seam open. Okay, now we need to trim that piece of binding to the correct length that we need. And as I mentioned, for size small, I need 31 and a half. And so I already went ahead and measured 31 and a half inches in length on my strip. So um, it should have a straight edge on either side. So now we're going to bring those short ends right sides together. And we're gonna sew the short ends using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're going to press that other seam open as well. Okay, so you should have one continuous ring. Okay, now we're going to attach the binding to the raw edges of the pouch. So we're going to finger press the binding wrong sides together in half. And if you prefer, you can put a few wonder clips on. Okay, so we're going to be aligning the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the pouch and just work our way around the entire pouch.
Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're going to wrap this folded edge of the binding over the raw edge to the opposite side. And you want the binding, binding to just cover the stitching line on the other side. So it should look like that. Okay, so I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and we're going to be sewing an eighth of an inch away from that pressed edge of the binding all the way around. Okay, now go ahead and turn the pouch right side facing out. And use your fingers to push out the sides and the top corners. Okay, and I like to put the pouch on the end of my ironing board and iron the front and the back to make it look nice and smooth. And I also like to sort of, with my fingers, pinch the bottom edge so that it forms kind of a straight line going across. And then I also like to leave wonder clips on all the edges for at least an hour just to kind of finger press the edges in place. So to do that, I'm just going to take my fingers and sort of roll the seam and then I'm going to place wonder clips all the way around. And like I said, leave the wonder clips on for at least an hour. You can leave it on even overnight. And then when you take the wonder clips off, the pouch will be nice and crisp. Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to say about binding. So in that particular tutorial video, I was binding one of my sewing patterns. And so that's why my length of binding fit perfectly in the project because I provided that in that particular pattern's instructions. However, if you're working on a project where either binding measurements aren't given or you'd like to add binding and it wasn't in the pattern, I always keep a piece of store-bought double fold bias tape in my stash. It's not only good for designing purposes, but it's also great for um, the at-home user because this is what I use to measure length of binding in a project. So what I would do is take this piece of double fold bias tape and wrap it around the raw edges and just keep working it around whatever edge that needs to be covered. And then either mark it with a pin or my fingernail, take this over to a ruler, measure the actual length of the binding that I need to, to, to have for the project, 
making sure to add the seam allowances. And honestly, I use this all the time. I was just using it a couple days ago for the exact same purpose. So um, binding is your friend, not only for in the bag, but for measuring purposes. So hope you enjoyed that tutorial. So um, I'm going to be answering questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type it in the comments right now, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching this video, make sure you're logged into your account first so that you'll be able to comment. I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and that winner is Renee Manandice. So congratulations to you, Renee. I've already contacted Renee via email and I also wanted to wish a very happy wedding anniversary to Michelle Graham. Uh, today's the day, so congratulations to both of you. Um, and stay tuned, I have another fun giveaway at the end of the show. So, all right, Danny, I know you've probably been collecting uh, questions and comments throughout the show, so go ahead and lay it on me. I'll take a sip of water really quick. All right, Charlie says, just a little tip for those of us who are not as good at the quarter inch seam consistency, the by Annie stiletto that Sarah sells is so helpful in pulling the binding over. Thank you for that, Charlie. I guess I'm a fan of doing it the hard way. For sure, a stiletto is very helpful for holding the edges, not only for binding, but for zippers and keeping your fingers free of the needle. So um, thanks for piping up with that tip, Charlie. Lynn says, when you measure the distance around, you add the half inch for the connection to make the tube. That's a really great question. So you'll, e you'll add the seam allowance. So if it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you'll be adding a half inch because a quarter plus a quarter equals a half. Or if you're sewing um, that connection with a half inch seam allowance, um, you'll add one inch. Um, the reason that I, sh that I sewed the straight seam when I connected the tube is because for, for me, at least for pattern writing instructions, I feel like it's more accurate if I can give just a straight measurement for a straight strip in the instructions and then just have you connect it that way rather than connecting uh, two diagonal points, uh, the measurements might be a little bit uh, different. Um, but you can do it whatever way you're co comfortable with. And again, you can choose whatever seam allowance you'd like. Just make sure that you add it in um, to, the, to the length measurement that you're cutting out of your fabric. Uh, Lorraine says the pattern looks new. Yes, that uh, tutorial video was from a pattern that we were actually planning on releasing today on the new website, but because the new website is not quite ready, we decided to wait just to make sure we could be assured that there would be no technical difficulties, at least. Uh, we didn't want to release a new pattern and have uh, any issues we wanted everything to be really smooth so we thought we'd just wait until the new website is ready but as you can see the video has been filmed already i have everything ready to go um, and i'll just i guess i'll just keep you updated via the newsletter and social media as soon as we have that uh, new pattern release um, charlie says sarah you said you like to think about panels for pouches but do you actually use them they seem so big um dan i don't know danny i don't know if you can get up and throw me a project or no See that gray pouch in the corner with the princess on it? Danny's going to throw me a, a pouch that I made with a panel. Thank you, Danny. All right. Um, I did use panels for this pouch. This is that project that I shared in the tutorial video. It's um, going to be called the Bellow Pouch. And I used uh, Disney tattooed princesses on the front and the back. So this was a quite large panel, and I fit it on the largest size. I think some of those dog panels that I shared would be okay to fit on this as well, something like this. Um, Seema says, can you please repeat what needles you use for back making? Sure. Um, I use 9014 Microtex needles by either um, Organ or Schmetz. Uh, those are the manufacturers. And I do have a free video on my YouTube channel discussing different needle sizes for bag making because they might differ depending on what type of fabrics you're using for your project. Uh, you can find that on the So Sweetness channel um, by searching needles for bag making. Dawn says, do you have a video of making a strap out of two different materials? I actually do. Um, maybe, I don't know if I called it double-sided strap or two-sided strap, but again, that's on the YouTube channel and I'll show you. I think in the example I used cork on one side and fabric on the other, but depending on what you're making, you can use a variety of different fabrics maybe just quilting cotton for both and just different fabrics on either side. Um, it's up to you, either will work. Dot says, I want a pocket for the exterior of a pouch but do not want the zipper. Um, how would that work? Uh, let's see.
Can I just use the same instructions for the zipper pouch, but just in don't install the zipper? Um, there's a few different styles of pockets that you could potentially add. You could do a slip pocket, which would just be uh, two rectangles generally sewn right sides together and you just slide your items inside. You could sew li vertical lines of stitching in that vertical pocket if you wanted different segments. You could also attach a magnetic snap to the inside of the slip pocket to make it um, sort of slightly closable. There's a few different options, but if you had something different in mind or just would like to walk it through one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you can always email me. And my, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. And Hope says, how do I access your blog? So uh, it is sosweetness.com back, backslash blog. And I post uh, Michelle Graham's pattern hacks there. I post all the social Sunday blog posts with the links in the blog. Uh, what else have I posted there? Our monthly challenges are posted to the blog. So a variety of things um, I post to the blog and you can always find them there. Cheryl says, how wide are you cutting the binding? Oh, I'm trying to think of in my instructions. I think I cut it two and a quarter of an inch wide. Um, yeah, I don't have my instructions handy, but I'm pretty sure that that's what I used for that particular demonstration. Colette said, why bias binding? Does it make it easier to sew on? So um, the reason for the bias binding cut at the 45 degree angle is that it uh, is slightly stretchy. So if you're applying it to something with a curve like this bag, um, it works perfectly. If you're applying bias binding to just a single straight edge, there's no need to cut it on the bias or the 45 degree angle, but I find that most bags have some sort of curve to it, maybe on the bottom or the sides, and so you'll want for sure um, the bias cut fabric so that it can stretch through the curves. Danny, oh, there we go. Uh, Kathy says, Sarah, I like using cotton webbing along with handmade cork straps for bags. Can you incorporate the dimensions in your patterns? Um, I think you're asking the dimensions and the patterns for the cotton webbing. So most of my straps are pressed, you, kind of like double fold bias tape. So in half um, and then pressed again in toward the center crease and then in toward the center crease. So if I'm using that particular method, you'll just need to divide it by four. So if I cut the fabric four inches wide for the straps and you'd like to use the cotton webbing, um, they'll just be one inch wide straps. Um, or on the flip side, if you just like to bypass all that figuring and just use uh, the, the cotton webbing that you have, generally straps are either one inch wide or one and a half inch wide. You can use either for a lot of the different bags and then just use that in place of the sewn straps with the quilting cotton. Randy says, do you buy fabric because you like it and then decide what to make or does the pattern come first for you? So I'm generally buying fabric based on what I like, especially since I know that every two weeks I'm needing to, sh to share fabric on the show. So in that case, I'm sharing fabric, not knowing what project that I'll make. Um, there's a, a quilt pattern that's coming out tomorrow that I'm planning on purchasing and for that particular project I bought a quilt kit because I knew in advance uh, I'd just be using that fabric for that particular project but that doesn't happen often usually I'm shopping my stash when I'm going to find fabric for a, a new bag or a quilt. Maria says do you also have a video for type of threads to use for bag making? Um, I don't think I do, just because I generally only use Aurifil thread. Um, I use Aurifil 40 weight cotton thread for bag making. Um, I've used 50 weight thread in a pinch. Um, I know others like using polyester thread. Polyester is completely fine. I've just always used the Aurifil and it worked out really well for me. Um, but there's different brands out there that work um, similarly as well like Guterman thread. So I guess it just falls to personal preference on the threads, at least for me. Danny, you're calling it, all right, Danny's calling it on the questions. I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I'll be back again next Sunday on Social Sunday with Danny answering some more questions. So um, now it's time for the giveaway. I decided to give away this uh, two yard pack of Biani Soft and Stable. Um, you probably know that I love using Soft and Stable for my bag making needs. And Soft and Stable comes in two different colors, either white or black. This particular pack is black. So I will be giving it away to one randomly drawn winner. I'll choose the winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announce the winner on next Sunday show. And all you have to do to be entered is answer this question in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch this show. 
And my question is, what is your favorite charity? So let me know in the comments. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Amazon has uh, a charity giving, giving program. All you have to do is Google Amazon Smile. And so when I shop on Amazon, I always go to the Amazon Smile website. It looks just like my regular um, Amazon website, except whatever I purchase when I go to the Amazon Smile website goes to my chosen charity. You can search for probably thousands of charities, but um, some of you might know I have a bearded dragon and I'm in a Facebook group for bearded dragon care and uh, they raise money for um, helping rescued beard, bearded dragons who are not being well taken care of or just need a little bit of extra help. And so that's the charity that I donate to. It's called Bearded Dragon Inc. So um, there's, like I said, thousands of charities to choose from, but I feel like it's an easy way to give especially since I purchase things on Amazon anyway, just a small percentage of my purchases just go to my chosen charity. So um, anyway, type your charity in the comments. Looking forward to seeing what everyone's favorite charity is. So that's it for me tonight for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week ahead and happy sewing. Bye everybody.